Hello AWS friends. In this tutorial let's see how to create a REST API for your S3 files. So let's say you have a S3 bucket, you have some folders, you have some files and to, you want to provide a REST API to access these files or even update or delete these files. You can do this pretty easy with API Gateway and we're gonna have a look in this tutorial on how to do this. The first thing you're gonna need is a role for your API Gateway. So you have to create a role, you have to attach a policy for S3 read access or you can create your own uh, um, policy to create grant access for a dedicated S3 bucket. Feel free to do this. And the next thing of course you need a S3 bucket with some folders or some files and the most important thing you have to create a new API here in Amazon API Gateway. I'm gonna skip this because I already have created this um, REST API. Let's have a closer look on this. Let's first have a look on this static method to see how it works in general. Later on we're gonna create resources with pass parameters to be able to access our files with these pass parameters. But for now let's have a look um, for a static example. So we're gonna create a integration request and point to an AWS service. And this is gonna be Amazon S3. In our case here we have a get method, we need a pass override, we're gonna create this in a second and also important the execution role, this is a role we just have created. For this simple example we don't need pass parameters, um, for these examples we will have to add them. But let's have a look and try to create um, a static resource, let's call it static and see how to create the integration resource. So we need a method of call of course and gonna create a get method and here it is. As integration type select AWS service. Select your region, in my case this is Europe West and select the AWS service and our case we need Amazon Simple Storage Service. We don't need the subdomain but we will have to define the HTTP method. I'm showing here get examples but you can also create delete or put to um, update your objects to delete your objects but in this short tutorial let's keep it just only reading files from our S3 buckets. The important thing the action type we need the second option and use pass override. For the pass override we need our S3 bucket pass. So we're gonna need the name of the bucket. Come on. You're going to need your folder. This is folder one and also the name of the file and that's it. The important thing also the execution role. We have created a role for our API gateway and now let's paste this and save. Now we can test our new method and all you have to do is press this button here and now you see hello AWS friends folder one text one these files are exactly the one I have uploaded to my S3 bucket there's also a small readme here in my github account which you can found here in the AWS advanced you find API gateway and S3 and again the steps we are doing here and so as you can see it's this easy to access a S3 file with API gateway 
just you need the right integration type and also the role ARM. So by now we have a static matic for just one file. Let's see how we can create a dynamic REST API to access your files. You can create resources here in API Gateway and you can not only give them static names, string values like static or static2, you can also um, enter here pass variable. So if you say um, new resource and give it a name like param, then you will be able to use these um, pass params later on in your methods. I'm gonna delete this resource. I have already prepared here my first resource with a pass param folder and my second resource with a pass param file. And under this one, I have a get method. And now the important thing in your method request, you have to define these two pass params, file and folder. And also in your integration request, this is the same thing, basically what we have seen in the static with just a small differences, which I'm going to explain. You have to again enter your pass params here as method request pass. This one is a folder and this one is a file. And now you can use these pass params here in this pass override string. In our static example, we have seen here the full pass. Now I'm using these pass params folder and file and we can dynamically access our files by the um, URL. Let's see how this works. Again, we're gonna use the test function, but now we have to enter our two params here. So the file, just the file name of your, of your S3 object and the folder. And now we can test our method and here is our return from our S3 bucket. So how can we use this straight ahead with REST or with a REST client for example? First we have to deploy our API. And once we have deployed this API we have our stages in our case uh, this one stage. And below these stages you find the resources and methods and now we can execute these methods. So let's just click on the link here in our dev stage. And right now we don't see the file yet because we have to enter our pass params. But once we have entered these correctly, you can see the S3 file here by calling this REST method. So let's see if we can change also our pass params. So we had also a folder one and a folder one text file. And as you can see, once you change the pass params, you get access to the files exactly like specified in URL. So you can also create delete method or put methods to delete your S3 objects to put some new objects in your folders. I'm not gonna show this in here to keep this tutorial short. It's pretty much the same like the guess methods. What else to say? Don't forget to publish to deploy your API otherwise the changes will not be visible in your stages whenever you do a change in here. Also maybe two more points. You can use custom domains names to provide a proper um, URL so people um, who will access your files will not using these cryptic URLs here. And for security, for example, there are different ways you can also integrate Cognito or IAM, but an easy way to um, provide a security for your S3 methods, for example, is an API key, which we, you will then define in your methods. 
And then you have also the cured your REST API for your S3 bucket. So, so far for this, thanks for listening and see you on the next lesson.